All the Shame of Lounge, episode number 305, with the same usual guys. We have same usual guy number one, same usual guy number two. Hey, hey. And same usual guy number three. That's you. Is it? That's you, listener. You're the third member of the podcast. <laughs> you, I think our math is off. And your earlobe things. Yes, it is you. Be wondrous. Be bold. So, by the way, I was just opening up, uh, pulling up uh, YouTube to go over to look at the uh, group channel so I can see what our uploads are. So when we get to that segment, I can clear them out. But my homepage is my own subscriptions page. I see Tessa Blanchard is still alive somehow. Why are you subscribed to Tessa still? Blanchard? And she's looking more like her dad every day. Bless her. Well, that's not good. Yeah, no, no. Tully's not a Tully's not a man you want to look like as a woman. <laughs> All right, Sue, Pink, have you got anything coming up on your channel this week? I believe so. I'm going to have Stronghold slowly but steadily coming out on the channel over the course of the week, and then I've got the other stuff that I still have yet to upload because the things were busy and I've just not had the internet time. But yeah, stuff is rolling out slowly. But surely. Slowly but surely. At the very least, you'll see it all by the end of the year. Ah! I can't say the same for the stuff I've got backloaded. Nah. <laughs> Addy! Well. Have you? I actually have. Unsanctioned, un all right. un unsanctioned video. It's coming out. It wasn't supposed to happen, but it got made. Uh, I, I make note of this. In the, in the video, I go, hey! You know, yeah, this, this video might not be as informative as, as I usually try to be. Yeah, there's a reason. Because <laughs> I, was, I was halfway through writing the script by the time that I realized that I was making the video, pretty much. So, Excellent! So yeah, that's coming out on Monday. And, uh... Yeah, that, 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 that's it for the main channel, the, the second channel. I don't know. Uh, I did record a clip in Yakuza 7 that I thought was funny, but usually I let, let those uh, sit for a couple of days, and then I watch them back, and if it's still funny, then, then I upload them. You have too much discretion. Yeah. Release the slop! We love let slop sl here. Let the slop fly. Like te technically, there's I think there's still a a video, a short, or whatever, not a short, it's a clip of a uh, of Persona Four that I uploaded that didn't see the light of day yet, because it, it, it I just titled it one more, because for whatever reason I got a, a combo, where I, I took a gamble like four times and I got one more all, all of those times, so I just cleared the oh. entire thing by just getting nothing but one more, more or less. <laughs> or at least that's what it felt like. But I don't remember the actual clip, so... <laughs> okay, Alrighty! That, that, yeah, that, that one felt the, the test of, uh, of watching it back, though. <laughs> Last time I did, so... Yeah. But yeah, like, I, I, just, I just really enjoyed the... The, the comboing of one more off of gambling. Because, you know, <laughs> for kids. But... <laughs> anyway, yeah. So there's that, uh... But it's not something that's gonna be released <laughs> at all. No, but <laughs> technically, uh, I did finish writing my second book, which is a sentence, right. isn't it? <laughs> now, I didn't know you were a first book. I didn't. Did either. I? Technically, y'all did, but uh, I don't. The, the books I write are uh, well memoirs for one, and for two, not really for uh, for public consumption as is. Uh, they will be once I'm like close to dying. I'll just take all of them and then just stitch them together and then just sell them, I guess. Because at that point, it can't hurt me. But... <laughs> yeah. But on, until then, uh, I do limited runs. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I try to do things officially, more or less, but, but without 
yeah, like, you know, actually trying to find, find like a publishing house and shit like that, because once again, not for public consumption. <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason I bring this up is because, uh, well, the reason I'm, I started writing this book a year ago, and then I just put it off until now. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I started writing this is because uh, the first one uh, was enjoyed by, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, you remember how I told told you that the uh, the uh, principal of the high school I went to is a uh, like a literature liter literature rich <laughs> fucking hell I can't say literature. There we go. So yeah, he's well known <laughs> in in liter literature circles. There I love go. literature circles. Yeah. And yeah, so he, uh, he, he was like, hey, so when's the second one? <laughs> and nice. Yeah, and out, out of the people who, uh, who got copies of the first one, uh, they, more, more, uh, multiple people asked for a second one. And it's been five years, so I went, hey, fuck it. I mean, be, th th things surely have happened in my life. I don't know how long, the, how long they, they would, uh, you know, actually be turns out turns out if you if you just spend enough time writing nothing you can take you can you can take five years of, of things happening to you and you can write them to be twice as long as 15 years so or that's to be 15, 17 17 years but still all right so yeah i mean these aren't like you know big tomes uh the first one is like 10 pages long the second one is 20 it, it the second one is also still uh, in need of editorial, so you know, subject to change. But uh, yeah, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm giving giving that to everyone for Christmas. I know a bookbinder, <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna be trying trying to go to find a printing press that will actually like make you know. I'm trying to make these actual proper like books, or at least close to them, as as close to it as I can get. I can get. And like I want these to be actual like hardcover and shit like that. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Here's the thing though, if I'm giving giving it to everyone, then I want to say, send copies to y'all too. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because if uh, if, if we get there, I, I will need like PO addresses. You know the, the, the like I don't need your your actual like address address. Just some place that you can actually pick it up. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll ask around. I guess. I think my parents have a P.O. box. I don't, but they do. Close enough. But yeah, because like, you know, if 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 I'm if if if, if we're doing that, because y'all are already in the uh, in the numbers, you're already counted. I uh, was getting uh, printed books. Uh, for for that to happen, I'm gonna have to translate both of the books, which means that you will actually get the the definitive edition of the first one because the uh, well, I didn't know <laughs> as much about uh, like form. In, in writing as I do now. So it will look nicer in, in the inside. I will not translate the, the front of it because fuck that, I'm not redrawing that. But <laughs> but you know, the inside, right. the inside will be good. <laughs> I've already made the front cover of the second one as well. <laughs> nice. Which I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, if y'all want to see or if, I, if, I, if it should be a surprise for when you actually get the book, if you get the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the as for like actual production, the book book is like actually written. It is done for the most part. As I've said, as I've said, editorial work needs to be done, but that that can be done while I'm also securing the other stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be talking uh, talking to the bookbinders uh, next Saturday, <laughs> and then uh, the printing press is just ongoing. I, I know I know two of two printing presses. There's the place I worked at, and there's actually one in in, in the family still. Oh. Through, one of, through one of my brothers in law. So, so yeah, the, things might actually happen. Y'all might actually receive proper ass books somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, that, that's the stuff that I, I've been up to. Alrighty. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. No, sorry about that. Anyways, on my channel, 
this week. Uh, expect Conan Exiles to continue the endless YouTube channel, the endless YouTube series. Yeah, well, it makes for an endless YouTube channel. Uh, I also have uh, three Dead by Daylight recordings I still need to upload. I just haven't gotten around to. So that expect that this week. Whatever else is a surprise to both I of like. us. like and on the group channel, tomorrow on the 27th, it is Dangan Rampa Trigger Happy Havoc something, part seven. Yeah, dang Dangle Romper. Dangerous Romping. Yeah. That, 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 they probably would still consider that title pretty hype in Japan. <laughs> And on Friday, December 1st, oh, we're getting into the Christmas season. It is me and Addy trying to figure out how the fuck you play Giant Graham 2000, a Japanese pro wrestling game. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, if I, if I that, guess... that one was an interesting one. Yeah. A lot of interesting ideas in that game. A lot of interesting ideas. Coast to coast moose halt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, if you'll need a uh, Christmas special, I, I do have one in clutch. <laughs> but we'll see. About oh, that. yeah. Yeah, do one of us do it, or we pick someone else to torment for it? I don't know. Once once again, like I I have one in clutch. I don't know uh, what, what your idea is. Uh, I realized one yesterday. <laughs> So, I see. And it, it, it's, it's one where, like, uh, we could probably record, like, three hours and it might not be done. <laughs> as, as in, like, I don't think I can actually oh. do the thing. I don't think I can actually do the thing that, that we set out to do. But we'll, we, we'd, we'd see. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, I don't think that's as appealing as you think it sounds. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think of the Christmas special stuff as, like, you know, just video podcasts, more or less. Kind of, yeah. Well, not for the one who's on the controls. Well, true, Pink, that one year, Pink, when it was Pink, we gave him a softball once. <laughs> I, that was a wonderful position where I think, Addy, you and I had both, it had been too long since we played New Vegas, so we were like, Oh, it must be pretty hard to go shoot straight from Good Springs to Vegas. Oh, no way. It's actually super fucking easy. Yeah. Walk in the park so long as you avoid the Casadors. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so like. I my, thought there my, were my... more spot spots. Oh, yeah, me too. But I guess they were further, further, like, I don't know, west? Yeah. But yeah, like, my, my, my idea for the thing is just, just like, you know. If if we need something fair, like Christmas Christmas related related on the screen while we talk about Christmas for for like a couple of hours, then then I have I have that. All right. Uh all right. So topics. You see the topic that I came up with last night, and you two agreed to it. Before we started this recording, but if you have issues with it now, deal with it. <laughs> it's too late. The topic is relevant as just uh, last night. Uh, CM Punk returned to the WWE. If you're not a wrestling fan, CM Punk is a very toxic individual who left the WWE uh, probably about a decade, if not exactly a decade ago, uh, under very acrimonious sub, uh, circumstances for very silly reasons, and has continued to make an ass of himself for the last decade. So for a long time, it was thought Punk is never coming to back to WWE. Never say never, right? No, actually never. But then he came back last night. So, topic I was thinking was, in any form of media, be it wrestling, video games, movies, television, music, what is one thing that you were firmly of the opinion you know, fuck, never say never. I'm saying never. This ain't happening. And then it happened. All right. Now, I already have an answer. Does anybody else need time? I have two. 
So? Oh. Pink needs time. So, well, Addy, we'll go back and forth, because I've got one off the top of my head immediately. You take one, I'll do one, then you do another. All right. Well, then, the, the obvious one for me is the one that we referenced uh, last week as well, I'm pretty sure, which is Akuma in Tekken. It was... Yeah. <laughs> That one was like, that one was so nev say never that it's like it would have been considered irrational to raise the possibility. Yes, like once again, I think I've said this, said this last week as well, but I will I will repeat it there this time as well. When when we learned of the news, it uh, a guy that we knew just posted, "Hey, guess who's in Tekken Seven? And then as a joke, I went Akuma, and then he posted the picture, and I went, "No, that's a lie." Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it cannot be. And like, <laughs> you know, it's it's so ridiculous. The, 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 like the reason that that I even meme about the reason I joke about Akuma being in every game is because of this. Because it, it happened once. It happened once. Yeah. It did. Like that one. Like. Before that, if you were like, oh man, I want Akuma and Tekken. It's like, well, yeah, do you also want, like, James Bond and Ozzy Osbourne and fucking uh, Mr. Rogers? All of these have equal likelihoods. Turns yeah. out that was wrong. <laughs> and now they're adding James Bond and Ozzy Osbourne and Mr. Rogers. And Mr. Rogers! <laughs> Mr. Rogers' Tekken 8 reveal is just the fucking the, the ultimate children of Ultimate Destiny. Well, Mr. Rogers as a fighting game character would have to be like some kind of Phoenix Wright character where he accidentally hits the opponent. Yeah. But that kind of that kind of goes out the window in Tekken because everybody's got the purchasables. So you could still give him a shotgun. That's for hunting. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh. Let's see, over here I have, and this one's uh, actually kind of around the same time frame. Uh, prior to 2016-2015, uh, the solid guess I had was, oh, Spider-Man or X-Men in the MCU. Never. Not happening. Sony and Fox are not going to let those go. And you remember 2016... Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe my memory's failing me. But was it not in 2016, the way they simply announced that Spider-Man was going to be in Civil War, was a picture of, Sp of Captain America and Iron Man's hands grabbing onto Spider-Man's wrist fighting over him? I don't know. That doesn't sound familiar, but I wasn't uh, quite up to date during that time. Maybe it was fan art. But nonetheless, yeah, when Spider-Man got announced for Civil War, I was very confused from it. They were like, so Sony's deciding not to do this whole weird thing they're going to do? And the answer was, no, actually, they're still doing that. They're just doing it without Spider-Man. <laughs> They're still doing this weird Sinister Six verse. It's just like, it's going to be Spider-Man minus Spider-Man. Like, you've all seen Garfield minus Garfield. Get ready for this shit. I was about to say, it went for Gar 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 Garfield without Garfield. Fuck. <laughs> Can't speak. But yeah, it went for, went for Garfield without Garfield, so it will Spider-Man without Spider-Man will work. What is Garfield. Uh, okay, did, did you mean... Okay, are you sarcastically saying what is Garfield, or are you honestly asking what is Garfield minus Garfield? I honestly don't know what Garfield minus Garfield is. Are we talking about the cat from the comic strip? Yes, there was a uh, fan project called Garfield minus Garfield, which was going through and taking every Garfield strip and very simply just editing Garfield and all of his dialogue and thoughts out of the strip, which the point of it broadly was making John seem uh, patently fucking insane and deeply lonely and depressed. Excuse me. Because <laughs> he's just talking to himself all the time. And several of the panels are just honestly like... Well, it, it's... You know, there's, of course, f several Garfield strips where John comes in and he says something very cheery like, today I'm going to get a lot done. And then Garfield, you know, thinks... You know, he's a cat. Garfield thinks, you're going to get nothing done. And then John like gets all depressed and goes, "I'm not. I'm gonna get nothing done." 
but they remove Garfield. So John just walks into a room. I'm going to get a ton of stuff done today. Empty panel. John is depressed on his hands. I'm not going to get anything done today. <laughs> and yeah, it's a very popular weird twist on Garfield that the actual Garfield creator has been a vocally big fan of. I like it. It kind of led to the trend of then comics that made Garfield a cosmic horror. Ah. I've as, seen one of those before, I think. As well as the Rick and Morty version of Garfield, which I don't remember what they even called the Rick and Morty version of Garfield, but I can just remember it just because the he just is like an incredibly vulgar version of Garfield. What was it? Garzorpalorp or something like that. And he just says, I'm, Gor I'm Gazorpalorp, bitch. Where's my fucking enchiladas? And there you go. That's the Rick and Morty bit. Gazorpazorp like, fucking field, bitch. There we go. That's what it is. Much like the Juggernaut, bitch. It's just part of his name. <laughs> uh, I, I saw an edit. Oh, we oh. got to crack open Marvel 2 again soon. I, I, I saw an edit. Oh, there's this animation project. It, it, it's a pilot for a show uh, called the, the Amazing Digital Circus, I think. I, I saw the pilot. But recently, I saw of, on an edit of a, of a part of the pilot where someone rewrote and dubbed the, the parts of the pilot that they, they edited uh, with, with the title, title of well, What if the people be behind Hell of a Boss uh, wrote, wrote The Amazing Digital Circus? And the introduction for one of the characters became Hi, I'm Kane. I'm your bitch. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Like, remind me later to try and find that because I, I, uh, I like that tweet. And uh, I thought about posting it, but I was like, well, y'all don't watch Tell of a Boss. Y'all don't, don't know what, what the Amazing Digital Circus is. So, like... But the... Uh, but, but I might, I might post, post it later, later just because, once again, the, the, the delivery of that one line is great. <laughs> Hello, I'm your bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, just say, say, say it as matter of factly as you can. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So where were we? <laughs> ah. Well... I had hit mine, my uh, right. mine. So you had your second one coming up. All right. Well, this one's a music one, but it's it, it relates very heavily to my niche uh, musical interests. So neither of you you will know what the fuck I'm talking about. Other people living living in the living in their their parents' basement will, however. But <laughs> so, uh, if you rewind like to 200 episodes, uh, you'll find the uh the episode of the podcast where I found the band Fake Type. Now Fake Type. Uh, well, for one, they were on hiatus, as in they broke up. And the time that I found them, they have since reunited. Doesn't matter. They are a an indie, like, niche uh, swing rap group, more or less. I see. Now, there's this, this uh, idol that I found pretty much randomly, from what I remember. I don't actually know how I found her. I just... <laughs> like, YouTube, YouTube recommended me her, me her music, and I went, hey, that's nice. So I did... Yeah. Uh, she's not particularly big from what I can tell, but like, I don't know. I'm not really like heavily into idol culture or whatever. I just like this one's, this one human's, woman's music. So like, whatever. I like this human's music. Yes. <laughs> so. So yeah. Uh, but you know, they, they're like two separate parts of, uh, of, uh, of like modern Japanese music. So I was like, hey, I like both of these. They will never do a collab. A month ago, uh they they released a uh uh, uh an edit of, of one of her songs, which which was I think like my favorite song from her last album. Uh Fake Type did a remix of that. And it's <laughs> it, it's it's not a full it's not a full like they made a new song together, but it's pretty fucking close. And <laughs> I saw it, and I was, I went, hmm, I, hmm, that's, 
uh, it, it's, it, it was unbelievable because, like, you know, it, it's, you know, both of these are Japanese artists, yes. But, like, that's pretty much where the, the comparisons begin and end. <laughs> so. So I, I didn't ex because it, because it's 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 like uh. Let me see if I can find a uh suitable comparison. Like <laughs> uh. Ima imagine if the, if if on the next Dua Lipa song there was just a steam powered giraffe uh like collab. What? Well, well, I <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you part? say steam powered giraffe, and is that like an actual animal, or is that a band? That that's a that's a steampunk band. What? I, 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 is is that an actual animal? <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, if if ever saw steam powered giraffe is an actual like uh, a steampunk band, which I don't listen to steampunk. <laughs> Spotify just there was a bit of time where Spotify thought that I liked I steampunk. Thought steampunk was an aesthetic, not a musical genre. You were right. <laughs> there's no, there's no rest of that sentence. These nerds need to stop readjusting the rules to their benefit. I don't like it. I can't keep up with it. Like I, I tried to like make sense of what steampunk music is supposed to be, but none of the like the, the problem with with music in the steampunk genre. At least uh, the stuff that Spotify has shown me was that there's no real cohesion. There is no things that tie the genre together. There's no like you know aside from literally the aesthetic thing of like we write about this thing. There's nothing <laughs> that, that ties them together. No, Addy, you don't understand. They put gears on their guitar for the aesthetic. There's no logic behind it, but the aesthetic. Gears. <laughs> Uh, I like how the the, the G cut off, so it, it sounded like you just yelled ears. They put ears on their <laughs> guitar. Ears too. For the aesthetic. Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, you know I, I I don't think any anything can uh, any anything any one like musical act can top the this one uh break core. Producer who has quit since I started listening to them, <laughs> which is whatever. They have a name that is unpronounceable because the name is user and there's there's a dash and there's I want to say somewhere between fifteen and twenty five numbers. <laughs> good good luck fucking finding that without like copying it. <sighs> uh, but yeah, so that, that oh. yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I had nothing to say. I was just uh, filling time. All right, but yeah, so the uh -huh. yeah yeah the the collab bit between Fake Type and and Rail was the was was my second one. Very very like once again, you know, it, it's it's not them making a song together, which would be nice, but like it's pretty much as close as it, as it is because Fake Fake Type doesn't remix songs by just. You know, making a new like uh, instrumental or whatever, they just pretty much just do it as like, okay, we have to do a duet, we do it with her. All right, cool. And then just, they just did that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pink. You know, for a long ass time, I was quite comfortable saying no. Nobody is ever, e e ever going to break the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. Oh, boy. And then we fast forward to uh, WrestleMania 30, live in St. Louis, Missouri. It didn't happen in St. Louis. I was hoping somebody would pop in with a different city and state. But anyway. I'm, I, I'm trying to recall. That was 30, right? 30 was in New Orleans. 30 was in New Orleans. That's what I thought. Yeah, because 29 was Punk. Punk was the last one to lose to Taker, right? Yes. Yeah, so that would have been New Orleans. Yes. I'm looking it up just to be certain, but Jesus. Yeah, New Orleans. But, uh, yeah. I was very confident that, you know, Undertaker... 
he, he's gone over Orton. He's gone over Edge. He just went over CM Punk last year. Now he's facing Lesnar. They don't give it to Lesnar. Lesnar has no benefit to this. He shouldn't even bother showing up for the match. This is ridiculous. Like, this is a complete throwaway. I don't even know why I'm watching this show right now. And then Lesnar hits the F5. He goes for the cover. The ref counts. He counts to one. He counts to two. He counts to three. And I, I stand there confused. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did, did Undertaker just die in the ring? Which wouldn't totally be a bad thing for me. But still, d d is he alive? Can, can we check a pulse? And then the graphic pops up on the screen. Uh, 30, the streak was uh, like, what? 21, 21 and one. 1. Yeah. It's like, oh. Well, they had the graphic prepared, so I guess Undertaker's not dead. Unfortunate, but uh, yeah, why, why'd this happen? What's going on? And then fast forward a little bit under 10 years later, I'm still asking, why did this happen? What's the benefit? And no, you know, answer, has, no answer has been given this far. So, I, you know, some things we, are just going to be mysteries eternally. We don't, we don't have a soundbite of, of, of him going Brock Lesnar, so you, you'll, have to, uh, you'll have to live with this. I you know, know right? Finally, someone said it. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, you want to say, like, well, Lesnar did stick around with the company for a decade afterwards and was very dominant and was a part of what kept WWE from it not being the complete drizzling shits throughout, like, the 2016 through 2020 period. But... Lesnar was going to do that regardless of whether or not he beat Taker. Yeah. Like, Lesnar, that did not add to Lesnar's legacy, him ending the streak. It's pretty well never even brought up. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's... I mean, the other, the follow-up question, though, is like, okay... We don't want no one to end the streak because if someone ends, well, at the same time, whoever ends the streak, that's that's more of a negative mark on their legacy than a positive one. The streak got to a point where the the fans didn't want to see it end. Yeah. So maybe if you put it on some like turbo heel that he's fine with people hating, like well nowadays Theory or Waller, Baron the fans hate. No oh, God, God, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, Addy, somebody needs to do something about you. You can't go on like this. You're you're a menace. So, I mean, you know, I said theory, but theory. Let's be real here. Theory. A lot of the heat theory gets is not really for what he does. It's just because the, of the accusations. Theory but, gets theory gets a lot of heat for underperforming in my in my universe mode. You, God damn it. Anyways. Yeah, uh, like, that's, I don't know, like, who at that time? That would have been 2014? 2014, I want to say. 2013 or 2014, but I think it's 2014. WrestleMania 28 was 2012, so yeah, 2014. That would have been 2014. Who else on that roster at that time would you give take or streak to? CM Punk a year ago. Okay, I know that the new bit you're leaning into <laughs> is that you're saying hey, you it's love... not a bit. That's not a bit. He takes the streak to ROH. I checked the THQ forums during that buildup. I was all for Punk breaking the streak. That year and the next year and the following year after that. Okay, I know this is the new bit you're leaning into. The, you're wrong. Um, punk, the, you're a Punk fan to fuck with Ted. But... <laughs> Jesus Christ, that would be a shit show. That would be even more of a shit show than Lesnar ending the fucking streak. Good Lord. After I don't know. fucking he, he left like a year or two later, so it was like Lesnar kind of did the same thing. He just came back in 2018 and actually was worth something then. And that after Punk having shit on uh, uh, Paul Bearer's corpse. Literally. It was on stage. 
The in only the disappointing thing about that buildup was that Punk didn't smash the urn with a chair or something or dump the ashes out in the ring. <laughs> that would have been quality. Uh, who, who was Why even, did even they not in... simply let me book this show? Who was even around in 2014? I don't remember. CM Punk. <laughs> the, that is an excellent question. Because that, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. I was like, well, who else on that fucking show would I get? BMB Drew McIntyre. Well, if Modern Drew, they actually might. I'd be more in favor of Heath, really. <laughs> oh, God. You know who's still on the roster at that time? Who? Ryback. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh... I'm sure that there was at least 10 minutes at some point in time where you could have pitched that to Vince and Vince would have listened. Yeah. Definitely. I don't remember if he, if he was around in 2014. I don't think so. But but my immediate like immediate joke answer was Evan Bourne. He might have still been there. He was on the roster, but he was definitely injured at the time. It was definitely either a time period where he was injured or out for blunt smoking. Yeah. Right. But like on, honestly, Bo- Bourne or Gabriel, you can you can say either of them. Both of them work as joke answers. I want to say he was out for the Mary Joanna in 2012, broke his foot in 2013, was rehabbing in 2014, and got released in 2015. Yeah. And he, him and Truth got in trouble for weed at the same time, didn't they? Uh, I don't remember if Truth was uh, suspended for the weed, the marijuana use. Uh, somebody else was, I'm pretty sure, though. I just don't think it was Truth. Well, it's kind of, in hindsight, it's kind of funny because any instance of that, it's like, okay, well, it's just that you didn't want to pay the, whatever, 2000 or whatever you had that they charged you every time you got caught for it. Because now it's known, like, oh, Orton got caught smoking weed all the time. He just paid $2,000 every time. Right. Uh, it's good. It's good to know Orton's wise with his money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do you all remember if if uh, if Gabriel had le- had left by that time for being being Dead and Rose's bunny? Which that's no, he was definitely still around twenty fourteen. He didn't Adam mean, Adam Rose was seventeen. Adam Rose was a twenty fifteen thing. All right, then, yeah, just, just fucking have Gabriel end the streak and then leave for being the fucking money <laughs> in that order. <laughs> you should have defeated the streak as the bunny. Yeah. God is my witness. The bunny. <laughs> the bunnyhood the dream un- has come true. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. What is what is the name of what is what is it you're supposed to call a bunny baby? It's not a kit, is it? Uh, I don't know actually. I, I think bunny is supposed to be the babies and rabbit is the the big one. <laughs> I I, I, I believe that's correct, but I I I'm too nervous to uh commit to that. Oh, I'm I'm trying to remember. I've heard either the name of what well, you're supposed to call a baby bunny or the name of what a pack of bunnies is. Well, bunnies don't really live in packs, but nonetheless, I'm looking yeah. it up. Hey, baby rabbits are called kittens. That's what I thought. So the the kittenhood dream has come true. <laughs> Uh, huh. You know, th- this discussion uh, th- th- reminded me. I don't know why there hasn't been, like, a, at least an, in, an indie, indie uh, promotion doing a thing where they just ha- get, get, like, a team of five people together, dress them all in, in crow team outfit, and call them the murder. I'm sure that if you had pitched that in ECW in the late 90s, they would have thought that was the coolest, and they would have, they would have nonetheless put Raven as the leader of the group. Completely failing to understand. Uh, 
Because like, you uh. know, <laughs> they, they, like I, I feel like that that that, that, that that's at least on the, on the level of like, uh, I don't think I remember remember the last two NXT like Anarchy Team teams <laughs> names. <laughs> Fucking relic. That was one of them. It wasn't but whatever. Blow with it. Relic was TNA. I know. It's killer bait. He chooses did you know? to be wrong. <laughs> like, what, what, oh, sanity. One of them was sanity. What was the other one? <laughs> uh, we had sanity. We had the Forgotten Sons. We had the Schism. We well, Schism, had... that's the one I know of. All right. The, the fucking people who... I think that maybe Triple H doesn't have that many bright ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I would not throw that accusation at him for the uh, main event stuff, which has been quite hype. But yes, Hunter has Hunter has a stable fetish that is undeniable. <laughs> I feel like that has to come to an end soon, ish, though, because I you know, I was about to say Judgment Day can't last forever. I don't know. We've several times been like, all right, well, Judgment Day is coming to a close now. Oh, no, they're still going. <laughs> they, they can't come start even coming close to a close now because now they're adding more members. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, they, I, have, they, they have added Horn Circle and Fit Finley. Judgment Day. Good Lord. I mean, Fit, I mean, Fit, if they ju- Fit Finley might, might, might still be the best wrestler. I don't know about, about uh, what's his face. Uh... The, the the third guy that's not that's not uh David or Ray's kid. But Dominic is great though. What are you talking about? He and Do- like we we are living in a time period where the weak link of the Judgment Day is Balor, and by all means, I've never thought that highly of Balor, but nonetheless, what does it say about Dominic that now Balor is the weak link? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think, man. I think Dominic might be the wrestler I've been the most impressed with, like, ever in the history Dude, of the sport. It's one thing that he's uh, started getting heat, but I was kind of figuring, like, well, he doesn't actually need to work all that hard. He just gets heat and whatever. But, like, no, he's actually, like, he's improving significantly as a wrestler, too. Yeah. It's stupid, and I hate it, but it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It has been very unbelievable. I was just thinking the other day while I was doing the dishes, because, you know, you got nothing better to do when you're doing dishes, but it's like, it's come to a point where I've somewhat forgotten that Dominic is Ray's son, if that yeah. makes sense. Because when I think about Dominic Mysterio, I'm just thinking, it's you know, it's that it's that kid. He's that, he's a stupid, evil heel that's... You know, slimy little rat and whatnot, and everybody hates him, and he does such a great job. And it's like, oh wait a second, just a few months ago he was feeding with his dad, and then a few years ago he was teamed with his dad as the most bland babyface ever, and he sucked and ass in the ring. And then even it's more, like, how did we get from point A to point B, where now he's like one of the things I look forward to most in the entire company? And yeah. Then, and then even more years ago, he was in the front row watching his dad get beat. Right. Yeah. Right? And, and now he had lost promos. Match and he had to be Ray's son. It was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was the moment we were all waiting for when Dominic finally said in that promo that he wishes Eddie had won that match. <laughs> uh, I, I just... I, like... I know that the feud is over, but during the feud, I wish that Rey Mysterio just had made, made a, a new shirt of his that is just his one tweet about him, <laughs> about him, 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 him being happy to go home, play WWE 13, and, and beat his kids. Yeah. Which, by, by the way, during the feud, Rey retweeted. <laughs> I, I did see that, yes. Oh, Jesus. The greatest baby face of them all. 
he he's a fucking menace. <laughs> I have said this repeatedly throughout the Santos feud. Santos is the baby face here. Ray's a goddamn menace. He stole fucking he stole Santos's title opportunity. I mean, uh, fuck it, if they want to turn Ray heel somehow, I'm down for it. Could be fun. <laughs> What the most impossible wrestler to turn heel? Fuck it. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's one of those things that, like, if if they pull it off right, then they, then he could he could be the the Stone Cold type of trainer where he's he's doing evil shit, but you're still supposed to like him, I guess. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Rey Mysterio starts drinking beer and flipping the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> he gets a new finisher. It starts off the same as the 619, but then he, he just st starts doing the, the those like lucha flips around, around people and then he turns it into a stunner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to, need to joke about the knee braces. He needs them. He does! Uh, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, all righty. Mexico rattlesnake. <laughs> well, this has happened. Uh Where do we go now? <laughs> where can we go? Well, I see no finer point to wrap this up. And conveniently I do need to get going. <laughs> oh, by the way, Pink. Uh soon wants to play Endless Legend next weekend. Oh, I'm down for that. Yeah. I can show you both the tech I've developed. Excellent. Well, actually, it's been so long since Soon's played, I imagine he just become like, what the fuck? <laughs> Welcome back. Here's the advanced arithmetics. Huh? <laughs> All right. Bye, I guess. Oh.